Welcome to Culture Bites. I'm Chef Rob Epps, a chef instructor at Southeast Community College. What we've got now is we've got a peppercorn segment. We're going to go through different types of peppercorn and we're going to show you a, a different kind of a, a French style recipe using a green peppercorn instead of the traditional black peppercorn. In the world of peppercorns, you know, what they are is they're just a berry, a dried berry off of a growing vine plant. Um, depending on when it's picked and what they do with it really is what makes it either a black peppercorn, a green peppercorn, or a white peppercorn. Uh, so what I have for you today, again, is a very classic French dish, and it's going to be a pork tenderloin au pois, and au pois just means with pepper. And so we've got a pork tenderloin. I'm going to show you how to trim that and what we're going to do with that. We have our green peppercorn. We have white wine. Uh, we have a little white wine vinegar and cream. We have salt. Very simple, very classic, very clean French style recipe. So there's not a lot to it, but there'll be a lot of flavor to it. The other thing I have sitting out here for you to look at is the different kinds of peppercorns. So we have just classic black peppercorns. And you can see that classic grind that up. It's what you put your salt and pepper on almost everything. And we have white peppercorns. And you can see they don't have that charred kind of a colored skin on them. And they're just going to have a little different flavor, a little milder, I would say, than a black peppercorn. Green peppercorn which is what we're going to use today. You can kind of see the green peppercorn. It's got that kind of greenish tint to the outside of it. It's going to have a little bit more of a pine kind of aroma and flavor to it. And then what we've got are also pink peppercorns. Now, technically pink peppercorns are not from the same plant. They're actually from a flowering plant, very similar to a rose bush. So think about that, right? Rose, very floral. And so with a pink peppercorn, you're going to get that real kind of sweet floral type of a flavor out of it. But it's still used just like pepper. It's going to have that bite to it, but it's going to be a lot more aromatic and a little bit more of that floral flavor to it. And so what we've got are just basically three of the same plant. Really the difference is with the green peppercorn, they pick this before it's completely mature and before it's completely dried out. And so it's going to leave a little bit of that kind of pine kind of flavor and aroma out of it. What they do then is they let it completely mature on the plant. And if they were to take it and just rub it in a machine, that's how you get this little bit of white skin on the outside of your peppercorn. So it's a non-fermented, completely mature peppercorn. When they do the black peppercorns, what they'll do is they'll actually take them and let them kind of slightly ferment and dry out in the sun. And that's where it gets that wrinkly kind of black skin to it, slightly fermented. And that's really what we think of in American cuisine is that nice bite, that pepper flavor, is because of that slight fermentation. It's gonna give it a little bit of that bite, a little bit of that punch that we think of when we think of pepper. And so kind of open your horizons a little bit. Try some of the different peppercorns out there. Uh, today we're gonna use the green peppercorn. And again, it's gonna be a little more of a pine, a little bit more of that kind of aromatic pepper. So it'll kind of go real nice with the pork that we're going to do today. So with the pork, I just have a nice tenderloin. The pork tenderloin is very tender, so you don't have to go through and tenderize it. You don't have to marinate it necessarily. It's going to have a lot of uh, inherent tenderness in it. But what you do need to do is you need to trim out this little piece of connective tissue right here. It's called silver skin. And I think under my lights, you can probably see it's very shiny. And it's kind of got these long strands in here. And this is where that tenderloin lays inside of the cavity of the pork, and it's what attaches it to the rest of the loin. And so when you remove that from the loin, that piece of connective tissue is there, and you have to take that out. If you don't, it makes that pork very, very tough, very chewy. Think of gristle. When you cook a piece of meat and you have gristle on it, that's what this is, that connective tissue. So we're just going to very easily trim that off, take a nice sharp knife, cut in just a little bit to get up and underneath that, and then you're just going to... Slide that knife along that connective tissue and kind of just trim it off. So you can see it comes out in a nice tight bundle. So again, that's very tough on there. If you don't remove that before you use it, you're going to have that nice big chunk of gristle on your meat and you don't want that. So let's take it off. And what we want to do is we want to cut this tenderloin into medallions. 
something that's going to be a little easier for us to cook and a little nicer to look at when we put it on the plate to eat it. So what we want to do is just cut this into basically uh, four segments. So we'll cut it in half. And we'll cut it in half again. That way we have these nice medallions that we can then use and cook and saute. That extra little bit of this long. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to flatten these out. If we leave them nice and thick like this, they'll look really cool, but they'll take forever to cook. The outside will get too cooked. The middle won't cook all the way. It'll dry it out. So we want to flatten these out. So what we want to do is we want to take that really nice thick medallion of pork tenderloin now and flatten it out. Now a really good way to do this and probably a sanitary way is to take a nice piece of plastic wrap, just regular sheet of saran wrap or plastic. We want to place that over our medallions. And again, because the pork is so tender, you can just use the palm of your hand and really just press these down and flatten them. If you are um, lucky enough to have a meat mallet, you can utilize a meat mallet. Now, pork is very tender, so let's not go all Thor, hammer, and destroy these poor things, okay? The flat side, because we want to flatten it, the side that's got the teeth is going to make a bunch of holes and tenderize. This is very tender, so we don't want to do that. So just take the flat side of your mallet and kind of flatten out the, the medallion. The plastic wrap is going to keep any of the raw juices from flying around when we're doing this so we can kind of be clean and sanitary when we do it. The other reason we want to do this is also going to make that nice and even thickness when we cook it, so it'll cook more consistently and cook more even. All right, so now the medallions are nice, flat, more an even, consistent size, so that when we go to cook them, they'll cook quicker and they'll cook more evenly. So I can set my raw porky stuff out of the way. Sure my hands are clean and sanitary. And what we want to do is we want to season our pork medallions now. Well, again, we're going to use the green peppercorn. And the green peppercorns are going to give us that nice aroma, that kind of piney flavor. We're going to also season with just kosher salt, give it a nice flavor and then seasoning with our salt. So what we want to do is we want to take that green peppercorn and we're just going to set them on our cutting board here. And then just with the back of a spoon, with something heavy like the bottom of a pan or the bottom of a, a measuring cup, you just want to give them a little bit of a crush. It'll open up the aroma, it'll open up the flavor. That way then also when you go to eat it, you're not going to eat just big mouthfuls of pepper. If you want to leave them kind of large chunks. That way you get that nice burst of flavor when you eat your pork. So we're going to take that nice crushed pepper and we're going to sprinkle it over the pork on both sides. And we're going to take our kosher salt and get a little bit layer of salt on there. Okay. Flip our pork over. Repeat, salt. This is our pepper. Now we're ready to start cooking. So what we want to do is basically do all of this in one pan and it's going to cook very quickly and very simple. These all here. So I've got here, I've got a nice saute pan getting nice and hot. I'm going to use some oil, just enough to coat the bottom of the pan. We want to take our pork and we want to lay that right into our hot oil.
because that oil is nice and hot, you'll get that nice sear in the pan, which is going to give a nice color to the pork. Also help keep it from sticking too bad. You notice when we cook the pork, or pounded out the pork, it looked very large. And so what's going to happen now is we cook it, all of those proteins are going to start to tighten up and that shrinks back down. So it looked very large, but it'll shrink up quite a bit when we cook it. So you start to get that aroma and that flavor from the pork, but also you start to smell that pepper. It's very aromatic. You get that kind of almost pine smell that you're going to get from the green peppercorns. It's very nice and aromatic. What I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to cook this on both sides until it's nice and brown. Pork, we want to make sure we get that to an internal temperature of 145 degrees. It's slightly pink. Uh, if you don't like your pork slightly pink, go ahead and cook it to about 150, 155. It would be solid all the way through. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue cooking this on both sides so it's nice and brown and even and it's cooked all the way through where we want it. While we're doing that, let's go back out to the field. We're going to have this nice little segment on pepper. So join us back in a couple of minutes. We're here today to talk about pepper. It is one of the most common spices in the world. And today we went to people on the street and we asked them what they thought about it. You have to choose, is it salt or pepper that you prefer? Pepper, definitely. Most food nowadays has a ton of salt added to it, so try not to add extra salt. I mean, it's, it's bullshit, am I right? Uh, are you more of a salt or pepper kind of dog? And you, how come you like the uh, pepper better than salt? Um, I think it, I just like the way you know it kind of seasons it, tastes better than I do, and I use it more than I use salt. So I'm gonna go with salt. Salt? How come? Flavor. Flavor. Okay. What do you use pepper with? I use pepper with a lot of things. Spice up meat, all kinds of stuff. I don't know. I grew up using pepper on everything. So can you be a little more specific? What exactly are you talking about? Pepper? Yeah, but like what meats were you using? Oh, um, mainly hamburger. I, mean, I like to put a lot of like my breakfast foods. I do burritos, sandwiches, eggs, oatmeal, really kind of anything I cook in the morning usually is when I use it the most. Okay. Who do you think the biggest importer exporter of pepper is? I have no idea. Well, it'd actually be Vietnam. They are the biggest. I do you prefer the pepper that can uh, that can shake or uh, or grind more? Okay, well, thank you. And that is all for today. We want to thank everybody for being interviewed today, those who were interviewed. Uh, it, was, it was a fantastic time. Any last comments, Mr. Nathan? Well, you know, there's, uh, there's 10 wickets in, uh, in cricket. So you just got to make sure that no matter how long the game is, you just keep, keep playing. Uh, OK. Another thing, I, I did have a great time interviewing everybody. Uh, it was a lot of fun, good experience. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's all I got to say. We, we gave it our all, we gave it our best shot out there, and you can't go wrong with that. All right, guys, back to you. Welcome back. What a fun segment. It's kind of interesting to see what people think of pepper out there. So we're coming back, and we're going to finish off our pork tenderloin au foie. Uh, we've got a nice brown color on both sides of our pork. Tempted it out so we're at a good safe temperature. So I've got my plate. It's a nice clean plate we're going to serve on. So we're going to take the pork out and let it rest. 
on the plate while we make our sauce. So we'll just let that rest while we make our sauce here. Sauce, very quick, very simple, right into a pan or into our pan here. So first what we'll do, we're going to take some white wine. We're going to deglaze with white wine. Now you're using alcohol and you're using heat. So if it does catch on fire, don't worry about it. It'll be fine, but it shouldn't. You want to take a rubber spatula and then just kind of deglaze that pan. Get all of those bits and pieces to loosen up off the bottom of the pan there. Now we're going to add our vinegar. And what we want now is we want to just cook this down slightly so that we get some of that vinegar to reduce. We're going to add our cream, and our cream is what's going to thicken this up and make a sauce out of it. If you add your cream too soon before some of that vinegar cooks down, it'll curdle your cream. And so you want to let this cook just enough until you can leave a line in the bottom of the pan. You can kind of see that as I run my pan, my spatula across the pan, it leaves a line. And that's kind of what you're looking for. So at that point, turn off your heat, stir in your heavy cream. Utilizing those green peppercorns are going to give us that nice bite, that nice aroma and flavor that you think of when you get a sauce that's got pepper and cream in it. So now I want to turn my heat back on just on low, just to thicken this up slightly. You don't want to go too hot and you don't want to boil it because your cream could curdle on you again. So just kind of turn that heat on nice and low, keep stirring it, just until it's thick enough kind of that it'll coat the back of your spoon. So just a little bit longer here. Now, if you were going to serve this, I would probably say maybe roasted potatoes, some nice asparagus or Brussels sprouts. You know, really go out there and impress your friends, show them that you can do some fun French cooking and utilize some of these peppercorns in a different way. Okay, so you see our sauce thickened up now. Again, I can leave that line as I run my spatula across. It's got that nice consistency. You always want to season your food, check it, make sure it tastes right. So grab a spoon, make sure it has enough salt and flavor in there. You might add just a pinch more salt. Always use a disposable spoon if you're cooking for other people. Taste, get a new spoon, taste, get a new spoon. I'm sure they'll appreciate it. Definitely something we do in the, in in the industry, in the restaurant world. Okay, so now what we've got is we've got that nice pork tenderloin. It's got the green peppercorns and the salt on the crust on the outside. We'll take this nice reduction. It's reduced white wine, white wine vinegar, cream. Then we just add a little more salt to give it a little more flavor. And you just pour that nice pepper cream sauce right over that pork. Again, if you've got some nice roasted potatoes and you've got some nice green Brussels sprouts on that plate, it's going to really give a lot of color and really make it a nice full plate. Well, I hope you enjoyed the pork tenderloin au pois. You know, we've got our nice green peppercorn, our nice green peppercorn cream sauce. Again, it goes really well with those asparagus or those Brussels sprouts and nice roasted potatoes. So I hope you enjoyed. Please join us again next time.